listening to Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast. I'm Kimberly Evans, and I've been planning incredible events for the past 16 years. I'm passionate about connecting people, creating purposeful gatherings, and making the most out of every moment. Join me as we learn together how to find joy, celebrate the simple things in life, use events to grow your business, and have a whole lot of fun along the way. Every day can be a reason to celebrate. Cheers to Celebrating Simple Life. Today on Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, I am giving you 12 incredibly fun and creative ideas to spend time together as a family. Like everyone else in the world, there have been a lot of changes that have been taking place in the last few months in regards to activities and where you can and can't go. And we've all been spending a lot of time at home. And I know that it's sometimes really easy to just park yourselves in front of the TV and just feel like it's hard to come up with something creative, especially when we're probably all craving a little bit of space from each other. However, tune in and hear all about the ways that our family has tried to stay connected and to be really fun and creative during this time instead of letting the space and tight quarters of our home get to us. So tune in. A few summers ago, we were putting in a new fence in our backyard and made sure to contact Sask Energy first. They want you to know what's below. Hitting an underground utility line can be costly and very dangerous. Always plan ahead. Get a line locate for any digging projects you have going on this summer. Like if you happen to be building a deck or putting in a new fence. It's absolutely free to have Sask Energy come out and it will definitely allow you to stay safe and save yourself the expense of contacting an underground utility line. Visit clickbeforeyoudig.com to request your free line locate today. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today on Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast. I am Kimberly Evans, host and owner of Celebrating Simple Life, and I am so very delighted to have you join me today on this very special episode of Family Night Ideas. Now, like all of you, we have been home a lot over the past few months and I wanted to just give out some creative ideas today. As an event planner, I haven't been able to use my uh, creative juices for event planning since it really has been a bit challenging in the last few months with gatherings and social activities all being cancelled. But you can't take the uh, event events out of the event planner despite COVID and we have turned the time together at home as a family into a way to be creative and have fun together and to just kind of make the most of every day and don't get me wrong I am not suggesting that every single day of the past 90 some days that we have been in lockdown have all been perfect in fact a lot of them have been downright not great at all. (laughs) But we are keeping it real here. And I just want to encourage you to just really find ways to spark joy in your household. And our our children look to us um, to set the tone for our family. And I know for myself, there have often been a lot of days uh, throughout my entire my entire journey as a parent, which has been 12 and a half years of of feeling like that's a big weight to carry. It feels sometimes, um, I don't know if it's just as women or or as moms, it just feels like often the tone of the household feels like it's reliant on us, or at least that's what I tell myself. And sometimes that feels really heavy. And I know I've I've even had conversations with my husband about how that just feels like a heavy weight to bear sometimes. And I don't want to sound ungrateful because I'm so very grateful for my family and I would not um I would not change that for the world and I would do anything for my girls but I really love my space and so for these last few months when I've normally been used to um I- I'm used to working from home and I'm used to working from home alone, which is very different than having uh, my husband and my kids uh, both home during the day. And it's definitely been a change of mindset for me, which I have had days that have just been amazing and days that I really have not coped very well and have failed miserably. And I've really had to check myself. And one of the ways that 
our family um, for years already since our kids were quite little our girls are nine and 12 now so they're still young but they're they're not little little and they are very much um, independent and do everything on their own and there's days right now where I can just work and I really feel like I haven't seen them much during the day even though we're all living under the same roof and then there's other days where they still want to be near me and need me and it's hard to get anything done and it kind of just depends on the day and I'm sure you can all relate and I've just I've really been feeling for um, the women in my circle who have really young children at home um, and they just haven't really been able to get out and find activities and I hear you. I, I remember the days of being at home and I did not have to live through a pandemic um, when my kids were really little and this I can imagine would be really hard. So I'm hoping that you can feel encouraged today with some of the ideas that we have come with us up with as a family to just connect with each other and almost to just like force ourselves out of the boring box of what should we do because it's really easy to like I said watch tv or we're going to play a board game and those are great fun suggestions we love doing that around here too but it's sort of been a way for us to think differently and to be really creative and to maybe imagine what would we be doing tonight if we were able to kind of go anywhere we wanted to go or do anything that we wanted to do and how can we recreate that to have fun at home and feel like we've really had an experience together and that's what I feel like I've been craving the most I just want experiences that's how I like to live my life and we're all not used to being home all of the time so I want to give you 12 ways today that we just in the last few months have done as a family and we've been doing Friday night family nights for years and it kind of has gone in waves where life gets busy or things go on and we like to travel and and be away a lot and so obviously right now that isn't the case and so we we don't hold Friday nights so close that we can't be flexible on our plans Um, but we really have over the years uh, done a lot of different things where we want our children um, and I even for my husband he I'm definitely the more creative person in our relationship and that isn't something that's generally up his forte and it's been it's been interesting as our girls grow up where he's the he's the only guy in our household and a household of women and he's upped his game too on trying to make us feel really special and surprise us and um, just show us his creative fun side as well which he usually keeps buried kind of deep down and we try to encourage him to bring it out so it's been really fun in the last few months just to kind of see how we've been able to do stuff together so I want to uh start from the beginning so these 12 ideas have literally been week by week things that we have done starting in March now right in March we had just come home from a family holiday and so we were very rejuvenated and had just had an awesome experience and a holiday away and so we were very fortunate and I'm grateful for this that we got home kind of in the nick of time and didn't have to have any plans canceled and I just feel very grateful for that but it really has left us a lot more refreshed I think because we had just been away somewhere and so we didn't um, have to cope with the very end of winter feeling like we hadn't gotten to get away or be somewhere new but what we started is I kicked it off on the very first night and for me as an event planner yes I know my friends and my family they laugh at me and tell me that I always go over the top on stuff but that is just me it is not it's not doing it because I'm wanting accolades or praise or um, trying to show show up my party planning skills it is literally something I just love to do I have been planning events and parties since as long as I can remember from the smallest of gatherings to big fancy affairs for for clients as I as I've been doing this in my career and I I honestly it brings me joy it brings me so much joy to be able to get inside my head and think creatively and make a plan and to be able to just make people around me feel really special and so my family has been the ones that have been the recipient of this from my family nights that I've planned. So how we decided to get things organized for ourselves is we decided that every Friday night was going to be family night. And because there really wasn't a lot of a lot anywhere to go, we we took turns. So we started with myself and 
went in an order. So it was myself and then my daughter, Lucia, and then my husband, Jesse, and then my older daughter, Cassidy. And that was the order that we went in. So everybody knew when their week was and we just rotated every four Every three weeks, you knew you were on the fourth week to do your your turn. And so it kind of gave them something to look forward to. And they've been thinking about it. And they can count on the calendar to know when their date is going to be. And they just can forward think it. And it's been really something fun to look forward to. And we have never yet left our house besides one of the weeks, which I will get to. So the very first, um, the very first family night that we had um, in March was I did a... M- mix up dinner party. Now I actually referenced this on my blog on celebrating simple life.com. So you can hop over there and check it out. I listed off all of the things that we did. I even included free printables that you can use um, for your own if you decide you want to recreate this at home for a family night or to use it for a birthday or something fun to do at home just to kind of change it up. Now this felt like a real throwback because I remember doing these little mix up dinner parties all the time when I was younger and I don't even know where the idea originally came from but it's it's just a cool way to make dinner fun so what I did is decided that I wanted a tropical theme for this particular mix-up dinner so I decorated our dining room and set it up with tropical decorations and just made it fun and it didn't really go like over the top, but just put some things on the table that like little plastic lays that we had had from parties and just little fun things like that just to make it feel tropical because it was still very much winter when we did this. So it was fun to feel like we could be in the tropics. I announced at breakfast that day and had printed out just little invitations uh, on my printer at home that invited my family to dinner at six o'clock that night and told them to dress tropical. And that was all that I said. Uh, which the printable invitation is also listed on the website that you can customize for whatever date you decide you want to do this if you choose to. And anyway, so they came down for dinner and they sat down and there was a menu in front of them and the names of the food was all listed as mystery names. So I picked tropical names and places that we'd been and different types of things that were listed instead of the food. And so they had to write down the number that corresponded with that thing and choose what they were going to get for each of the three courses that uh, we had for dinner. So it was picking your, your food and utensil and everything was all mixed up. So you might get a spoon or a big ladle or something funny. And it sounds ridiculous, but honestly, we were laughing our heads off and having so much fun. And it felt like we had been away somewhere and it was really cool. So we had this really fun dinner. Everybody enjoyed it and it just made for lots of laughs. And it was fun watching the kids try to use the big spaghetti um, utensil to try to eat their soup and whatever else they had to use for it. And so that was one of the things that we did on our very first week. So I might have set the bar a little bit high because it was pretty fun and I printed menus and I customized everything. And from weeks on, I think everybody has started to think like, oh man, I got to be extra creative. So people are really wowed by this, which has occasionally in my household, which my girls love fun things and creativity has caused me to have to get a little bit more involved with their family nights than I have sometimes maybe wanted to um, and just wanted it to be a little bit simpler, but that's okay. It's been fun and they've enjoyed the process of being able to kind of just have creative freedom to pick whatever they want. So I thought, what better way to describe the first family night that Lucia picked than bringing her on? Hello. Tell everybody what you chose to do for your first family night. I chose bowling because it was the first time and we were talking about ideas that we could do and then I heard my mom say we could do like a bowling or something and then I got that idea and then that's how I wanted to do it. So you heard me say it and you just decided to run with it for your first family night. So besides just the fact that it's fun hanging out, what about family nights are special or important to you? Why do you like it? Well, we all have different creative ideas and we can spend more time together and it's like always planned on Friday night. We just always remember. So do you like that there's just sort of the tradition of it? You just can expect during the week like, oh man, I got through the week of school and now Friday night gets to be like fun night. Yeah. Now this was really fun. We Our house is set up in a way where our family room is kind of more of a long narrow space that has hard floor in it. And so on the wood floor, she set up 
long lines of blankets that she just collected from around the house so that she could sort of create a lane. It almost made it like bumper pads for the lane. And she set up um, cans, pop cans from our recycle bin that hadn't been crunched up yet. And she set them up like bowling. She made scorecards. She made bowling alley snacks and an area that we could sit and that everybody could take turns going up to the bowling lane and then sitting down and having snacks otherwise. And it was really, really cute. She had music playing and it was just really fun. I honestly felt like we were at a bowling alley. It was super great. And we bowled and reset it up every time. And it was just, it was fun to feel feel like we had had another experience and we were literally rolling a ball on the floor in our third level and the kids loved it. It was a blast and everybody, we've just encouraged everybody to be supportive of what the other person chooses because part of it is that we're trying new things and we're trying something that the other person thinks is fun. So it doesn't really matter if you think it's fun. It matters that they think it's fun and we're trying things that are different. And it's kind of been a few lessons that are in there too, because there have been times where I can see one of the girls maybe rolling their eyes or not necessarily, um, thinking that, oh man, this isn't really going to be very fun. I wish we were doing something else tonight. Um, But that being said, they have always put in a valiant effort. They have been super supportive. They've given compliments of what they're doing. And nine times out of 10, they totally forget that they didn't think it was fun and they absolutely get into it. And they're just happy that we're spending time together. And the conversations that come up and the things that take place when you're actually just doing something together versus zoning out and watching TV or being on electronics are all just kind of in your separate areas of the house, which don't get me wrong. That's a whole nother episode of there's nothing wrong with each having your own space once in a while, (laughs) but it really has been fun. So that was Lucy as first. So number three, so Jesse, I think, was feeling the pressure on his on his night because he always feels like he's the most boring one in the family because he lives with three very energetic girls and um, often just wants to lay low on evenings. But he knew that it was his turn for family night and he wanted to do something really fun. So he ended up bringing in our camping gear. So he brought in our big tent and... Um, air mattresses and had set up a little pretend um, wood fireplace that he put a candle onto and brought in the marshmallow roasting sticks and we watched a movie laying in the tent as if we were camping having an outdoor movie and we roasted marshmallows and made s'mores and it was really really fun and actually him and the girls ended up having a sleepover in the tent And they graciously allowed me to um, stay in my king bed by myself. And I felt like I was in a hotel because they were all just having their sleep out and I got to have a little bit of time to myself. So (laughs) it was super fun and it was really creative. And just the way it was set up and the lights were off and it was dark and it really did feel like we were camping. So that was super creative. So number four was Cassidy's first family night in the last couple of months. And I thought, you know what? We have Lucille on here. We better bring Cassidy on too, just to give us a little bit of a snippet as to what inspired her for her creativity behind her theme night. What did you do for your first family night? Um, So I did a Gilmore Girls inspired movie night with lots of food because they eat so much. I'm always like, oh, I really want to have that food. So how did you decide to do a Gilmore Girls night? Um, well, me and my mom, we watch Gilmore Girls, like, that's our show that we watch when we're with each other, and, um, I just always loved how they always, Rory and Lorelai, how they always had those movie nights, and I was like, what if we did that? So I... So you're the Rory to my Lorelai? Yes, and I want to get those sweatshirts. Which maybe we will. So I love that you were inspired by this and you're kind of the type of person who, like me, when you see something on a show or a commercial or something, all of a sudden you're like, oh man, suddenly I'm craving this. That's me. Like every single time a show comes on, um, they're like eating a sandwich. Oh, I want a sandwich or, oh, I want Subway. And it's mostly like 
like not junk food, but like restaurant food. <laughs> yes, I hear you. So what were some of the snacks that you picked out for your Gilmore Girls theme night? Um, so we had Chinese food and pizza and Twizzlers and Swedish berries, Oreos, and then chips and popcorn. <laughs> so just a little bit of junk food. Yeah, <laughs> just one of everything. This, yeah. Needless to say, we didn't feel great afterwards. And we had soda, which bubbled everything, and it was... Uh... So TV maybe is a little bit deceiving with how much characters on TV pretend that they're eating, and they always feel great. Maybe that's not totally real life. If any of you saw back to an Instagram post that I made um, in May for our anniversary, our girls ended up cre- recreating a dragonfly in at our house in order to make us feel like we had a getaway for our anniversary because we couldn't go anywhere because of the pandemic and so anyways that was inspired because Cassidy and I have been watching Gilmore Girls which has just been such a fun bonding experience because like Lorelai and Rory Cassidy and I talk throughout the show and discuss things and topics come up and it's getting to a place where it's a little bit past her age of the show of things that they're topics that they're talking about but it has presented incredible conversation for her and I and it's been so cool so I loved that she chose Gilmore Girls as her theme night so she actually planned a night where she looked back on one of the episodes and they were having a mother-daughter movie night and we did ours with the whole family but they had a whole bunch of specific snacks that they had picked out and they always go way over the top on the snacks that they pick and so one of the things that has been my girls' favorite thing to do during this time of starting to do click and collect on our groceries versus going grocery shopping in the store is they have now turned click and collect as a way for them to add whatever they want to the virtual shopping cart because they used to chuck garbage into the cart and it would just kind of randomly go through the till if I wasn't paying attention and we'd get home and I'd realize that they had put stuff in the cart. Now they just do it virtually and I don't scroll through the whole cart before I click send to the grocery store and so We've had all kinds of things that have come up in the cart, which has been hilarious. And it's just been one of the ways that we've sort of found joy in this whole situation where they've thought it has been really fun that they can just kind of pick what we eat for certain meals and they can put fun snacks in the cart. And it's it's been great. We actually watched a throwback movie to the 90s, a goofy movie. So it was a cartoon, fun family movie that I actually owned on VHS as a child. Yes, it is true. And so it was really fun. Remember the fun candies of the 80s? Fun dip, garbage pail kids, and bottle caps? If you are on the lookout for a creative way to cheer up a friend, show your significant other, bestie, coworker, and special people in your life that you care, I've curated an adorable, delicious, and unique retro sweet treat grazing box. A beautiful, delectable candy grazing box can be shipped right to your door or as a surprise to a friend's door to really make their day. Doorstep delivery is available in Saskatoon and shipping is available anywhere in Canada. And because we could all use a little more joy right now, as a listener of Celebrating Simple Life, the podcast, you get an exclusive code to receive 15% off at checkout with the code CELEBRATE15. You can click right from home at CelebratingSimpleLife.com and use the code CELEBRATE15 because today is a great day to celebrate. So number five was I decided to, this is back to me again, so I decided to do a travel theme night. So we in the last couple of years bought one of those really big world maps that we have up in our family room. I've been meaning to get it framed for right now. It's just kind of fastened to the wall, but I would love to get it framed because travel has been so important to us. And when Cassidy was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis back in 2012, that was just, we had already traveled quite a bit before that, but it was one of the things that it just kind of shook us to our core and realized that we just wanted to make sure that the moments that we spend together as a family and um, really reevaluating our our values um, and travel has just been so important to me always. I've loved traveling and never really traveled growing up. Um, to faraway places. But as soon as I was an adult, literally my very, very first airplane flight was to Taiwan. So just go big or go home, I guess you could say has been my life's mission. And it was 
um, oh, it's just always been really important to me. So this map has been really fun and we've always been meaning to kind of put little pins in places of where we've been, where we want to go. And so what we decided to do, what I decided for us to do on this night is I got a bunch of little pins, just had a container of them at home and decided that, um, we would map out places that we've been and then we had different colors of pins. So we had a certain color of pin of where we've been. We had a certain color of pin of places that just Jesse and I have gone together because we've gone on a lot of trips that have just been us without the kids. And then we had a different color pin that was places we're dreaming of going. And so it was really cool. We took turns, each picking a place. And as we walked through where we had been, little stories would come up and things that we remembered about where we traveled and talking about how cute the kids looked on their little passport photos through the years. And I don't know, just found um, things that we were remembering that were just kind of fun to walk down memory lane. And so we we pinned the things into the map. And what we did for um, this night is we started we started in the living room and we I told them that it was dressing fancy. So they they showed up and we dressed fancy and we had some charcuterie. I, I made a grazing board for them because you know me, I love my grazing boards and, and charcuterie. And so we ate and had fancy um, mocktails and just um, had some conversation starter topics. So we were talking about just fun questions and went around the circle. And then we moved down into our family room where we did the map exercise and um, posted places that we want to go. And then we had this fun virtual um, game that we had been playing online with some with our with our friends virtually and decided our kids had wanted to play too so we all had our devices and played this game and it was like a Japanese kind of knockout t-shirt kind of game that we've played through this online app and so we had sushi and t-shirt and we just kind of picked travel I picked travel themed related food to go with this game and it was just really, it was just really fun to kind of move around the house and feel like you'd had a few different experiences that night. So number six was a home spa night. Now this was Lucia's idea and she knocked it out of the park. This was so much fun. I kid you not, I honestly felt like I had been to a spa. It was so relaxing. She, um, I helped her get it set up and she told me exactly what she wanted. She pulled out Um, these little um, tubs that we have that you can fill with water to have a little foot soak. She put the salts into it. She found the clay um, face mask um, cream that I have. That's a really nice um, clarifying mask. And she had spa music playing on the TV and she closed the blinds and had candles lit and she made healthy snacks with cucumber and different types of things and fresh water with lemon in it. And it was so relaxing and we soaked our feet and she sat and used a little scrubber and like washed our feet and it just we just felt so served and loved and you could just see how much care she had put into it and it just made me feel so special and that was a really fun one and we all did face masks together and took pictures and it was it was a really fun time it honestly felt like we had been at a spa and then number seven was going on a hike now this is the one that I referenced saying this was the only time that we actually left our home and this was seven weeks in to COVID starting and um, we found a hiking place. So we initially went to a place just outside of Saskatoon that we wanted to go hiking at. But actually when we got there, there was lots of cars in the parking lot at the top of where the hike kind of begins and just decided from a social distancing perspective that if there was lots of cars there, we just didn't want to get into a situation where we were passing too many people on the path. And we've been very cautious and continue to be quite cautious about social distancing because Um, just trying to abide by the rules of what's going on in the world, as well as taking it extra steps further with Cassidy having cystic fibrosis and just being extra careful and following the rules of her physician. And so um, we decided to try to find a place that maybe just wasn't quite so popular of a place. So we ended up going a little bit further out and just found this place along the river where we could just park and hike and we, we didn't hike for long and by hiking by no means are we avid like mountain climbers and we're in Saskatchewan so let's be honest um the the hikes 
can be long, but they're not steep climbs. But all, it was so fun. We were along the river and there was some actually steep areas that we went through that felt kind of like cliffs. And we walked through and through the forest and Cassidy actually ended up finding a geocaching thing that she was doing while she was in there. So she was super pumped to have found this ornate uh, geocache. And it was so beautiful and it was a lovely day and it was early enough in the season that there really wasn't a lot of bugs out and the sun was shining and it was hot and it just it felt really good to get out and after being cooped up in our house for so long in the backyard kind of being um, as far as we were going besides me kind of going on my walks every day <laughs> it was nice to just get away and then number eight so Cassidy decided that um, she wanted to have a Disney theme night. So she created a Disney theme night. Now, we have had the pleasure of going to Disneyland twice as a family, um, once as a family holiday. And then the second time we went was actually for her children's wish trip that we took um, back in 2016, which her wish was actually to meet the cast of Fuller House, which that'll be a whole nother episode because that was just the coolest day of our lives. Um, but we also got to go to Disney for a couple of days. And so then just now when we got home from holidays before COVID, we had actually just been in Disney World. And so Disney was on the brain. We love Disney. And so we've collected some fun paraphernalia over the years. And so she decided she was going to do a Disney theme night. So she recreated some of our fun Disney foods that we love from Disneyland, the famous pineapple Dole Whip. And she actually even deep fried these little donut things that we had had in Disney World. And it was really fun. As you can tell, we love food. And so she has always based her family nights very much around the food but she had some fun Disney um, stuffed animals and souvenirs and things that we've collected and we um, just talked and watched roller coaster videos on YouTube of the rides that we had been on while we were there and pretended that we were reliving them and then she came up with a super creative exercise for us to do to think and dream and she asked us, she gave us each a piece of paper and a little book or clipboard to write on. And we all had 20 minutes to sit and draw what we would put in our very own theme park if we could create it however we wanted. And this was honestly one of the funnest activities we've done together as a family. We sat there and we were laughing and minding our own business and drawing. But it was so cool to see what everybody came up with when we showed our drawings to each other and Lucia's was filled with roller coasters because she's a thrill seeker and Cassidy's had lots of different areas and tons of food stations of course because that's one of her favorite parts about being at theme parks and mine was more spa related and had a lazy river and some fun rides too but it was sort of more a lay on the beach and there were little cocktail stations and entertainment and rides that um, went near and around in a day spa and yeah, that type of thing. And Jesse's was full of roller coasters too. And it was just really fun, um, to compare notes and we've kept our papers that we can look back and see what we created, um, for those, which was really great. And then number nine was gardening and planting. So it was my turn again and decided that the the days have been more beautiful now. So this was into May and we wanted to um, get our the pots on our deck and we do container gardening at our house and by container gardening, gardening, let's be honest, I have black thumbs and so we don't usually plant a whole lot and often we are gone a lot during the summer and going on hopefully road trips and different things, but we know that we're going to be home most of the summer because of everything going on this year. And so we wanted to make sure that we had some um, stuff to take care of and the girls were really excited about it. And so we ended up ordering a bunch of plants and herbs and um, vegetables and had the soil and stuff. And we spent the evening planting, which was so much fun. So we ended up planting strawberry plants and we got our herbs and our basil and mint and thyme got together and onions and jalapenos and tomatoes and some flowers just to make our deck a little bit greener. And it was really fun just getting our hands dirty and um, hanging out outside and it happened to just be a super hot night. And so, yeah, it was just really fun to just feel like we were um, doing something outdoors and 
creative and already our plants are growing so much that it's just been really great to um, be able to watch that process grow all the way from small to already seeing blossoms and things grow. And so yeah, that was a really, that was a really fun night. And then number 10 was activity stations that Lucia created. So she decided that there was a few activities that she had kind of been missing um, that they would normally be playing at school during gym or recess that we really hadn't played much. And because our winter seemed to last forever, it still feels like a luxury to be able to um, go outside now and do things on the green grass rather than in the snow. And so she decided she wanted to do a few activity stations. So we ended up going into the park behind our house and it was amazing because nobody else was out there and we played soccer as a family, which we have honestly never done before. And I'm not sure why, because Lucia would often come home from school saying that she had played soccer at recess and seemed to really like it. And a little throwback here, your girl, Kimberly, she's played some soccer, grades four, five, and six, elementary school. I'll be honest, I hated every minute of it. It was always in late fall that we played. It was freezing cold outside and... You would get hit in the face with a ball and it was ice cold and the whole thing, all of it was not my jam. However, we had a blast playing outside and we just played two on two and just played not even quite half the field and used the same goal and just took turns and it was really fun. And then we moved to the next station of playing uh, 21 basketball hoop. So we have a basketball hoop that we um, roll out onto our cul-de-sac to play outside and we shot 21 and I was awful. I am so rusty and I blame it on the bouncy hoop rim, but honestly, it, the kids were way better than I and it was really fun just to do something uh, like that. And then we ended up going on a family bike ride, which was really nice too, just to kind of get away. So it was a super active evening, actually. My legs were incredibly sore the next day, which was a very good thing. And we followed that up by making homemade pizza at home. So Lucia found a homemade pizza recipe that she wanted to try and we just got a, um, we've never owned a mixer, like a baking mixer before. And my kids both love to bake, but honestly, up until now, it's just always been like mixing either just with the hand mixer or just by hand with a spoon. And so we got this mixer, which has been so fun because we've been making bread and doing different things, um, in the last few months, but she was able to make her pizza dough and it was, it was delicious. It was so fun and good. And we just, we were all tired and hungry after all of our activities. So that was really fun. So number 11 is Canada theme dinner. So this past week was Cassidy's turn for family night. And she has been doing some research project for school that she um, is doing some research on. Um, They had some options of places where they had to pretend um, travel to and um, just learn a little bit about the culture. And so she, one of the places that they could choose from was Quebec. And so she picked Quebec and she's in French immersion. So that's always very exciting for her and she can't wait to go there someday. So anyways, she decided that she was going to do a Canada theme dinner for, um, our family night. And so she had researched, um, foods that are popular in Canada, which as we all know, it's always hilarious because everywhere you go in the world, everybody assumes that poutine and maple syrup are like what we live on and that we literally eat nothing else, which I always find so funny. Um, But anyways, she had dug a little deeper than that and found some foods, which of course did include um, poutine. And she even attempted to make the maple taffy where you heat up the maple syrup and boil it and then pour it over ice and use your little popsicle sticks to turn it into taffy, which was really fun. We kind of did it table side and it didn't totally work like it should when you're doing it like outside on the snow, Um, but it was super cute and it actually was really yummy. And so yeah, we just had some really fun themes and it ended up being like a two hour dinner party. She like had things in little courses and we would just sit and a little bit would come out and we would eat and she would go prepared and then come back and sit down and we would chat together and we played a Canada um, Canadian artists, um, on Spotify so that we could listen to some music while we were hanging out. And it was just really fun to see how she had actually used her research project to inspire what she had done for her family theme night. So that was really neat. And then the final event, which I'm going to tell you about today to get to our 12 that I promised you is coming up later on this week. So 
we had the privilege of being invited by IG Wealth Management and they are friends there. They host such fun events and they just they just treat um, their clients and um, colleagues and business partners and things like that so well. And we were fortunate enough to be invited to a grill master event that they are hosting this Friday. And so we get to um, go online and I, I can't really say exactly how it's going to be because I haven't done it yet, but I'm really excited for Friday. And we're going to go online and watch a chef um, who is a well-renowned grill master and he apparently has like the number one barbecue sauce in the world that he has won and um, different awards. He has a show on the Food Network and it's just going to be this like, really cool event where they are going to have Michael Callahan, the Food Network judge and TV personality, who also happens to be the lead pitmaster of Team Canada Barbecue, who is going to be doing a virtual cooking event. So we get to buy the ingredients ourselves and if we so choose to cook along, which we're going to because it seems kind of fun. And we're going to cook together as a family while we're watching him do this live event and um, he's going to show us techniques of how he grills. We can ask questions um, if we want to and just get to grill along with him. So that is um, just so happens to fall on Friday when it happens to be Jesse's family night. And he is all about grilling and barbecuing and everything in between of that sort. And so um, we're super excited to participate in that. And so I hope that some of these ideas have sparked joy that you've maybe gotten some creative things that you think might work for your family. And honestly, these things can be kept so simple. And I know some of the ideas I've given today have been seemingly maybe a little bit more um, elaborate, but they all can be done so simple or or not. However you, whatever works right for you. And I think that it's just been really cool to see how you don't need to go places to have a good time. And sure, as much as we love traveling and getting out and doing stuff, there has been something very calming and very comforting about knowing that we're just where we are right now. And there's nothing that we can do about it. And this is just the way that it is. And instead of being sad and depressed about it, we've tried to make the most of it. And so I would absolutely love to hear what ideas you have come up with because I always love a good idea and eventually I'm going to need some more material depending on how long this goes on. So would love it if you would take the time to shoot me an email, Kimberly at CelebratingSimpleLife.com or message on Instagram or Facebook and just comment below this post on Instagram and let me know what you guys are doing for fun and how you're celebrating every day and how you're um, striving to um, connect with your kids and just really be present during a time that is feeling uncertain. So thank you so much for tuning in today. It is just my joy to be able to share these ideas with you and the feedback in the comments and the encouragement that I get every single week from um, this podcast is just so overwhelming and I could not be more grateful for the community that I get to be surrounded by. So thank you so much and enjoy your day. This show would not be possible without you, my incredible listeners. It would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to Celebrating Simple Life on Apple Podcasts or download and listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you choose to listen. If you really want to make my day, leave a review. These reviews, ratings, and sharing screenshots of podcast episodes that were engaging for you on your Instagram stories and tagging friends that you think should hear the episode too really helps the podcast grow. It makes me so happy that I often select reviews to read on the show. And if yours is chosen, you will receive a special gift from me. Thank you for being a part of my mission to connect stories of business and life. Cheers to celebrating simple life.